Hi, I'm Joe St. Charles at Flats and Sharp Music and we're doing a quick tutorial today to talk about how to set up a drum set. Oftentimes with new drummers, um, you'll get a drum set and be like, oh, now I have to set this up. Where do I start? Or some parents of younger drummers get a drum set and they might be a little out of their element and can't get any help from their young, uh, you know, daughter or, or son who's a student. Um, so we're going to uh, go through that really quick. Uh, obviously, you have a drum throne. We'll start with the drum throne. You can see that this is the tr it's just a tripod uh, legs that can go in and out. Normally, you'll find this on the drum throne. Pretty basic. So you want to get that going first so you have a seat. Now let's start the bass drum and build our way up. So the first thing is the bass drum here, okay? This would be the, the part that you strike, okay? So the first thing here is we have these little legs. Every drum set is different, by the way, so you might run into things that are slightly different, but more or less it's the same thing. First thing you want to do is move your legs out and tighten them so that the legs themselves are against the floor and holding the front of the bass drum firmly so that when the performer strikes the head, it doesn't slip all over. Ideally, you'd like a carpet or something under this drum set. So if you don't own one of those, you want to get some sort of rug with a rubber bottom to put under the kit so all your drums don't slide all over. So now that I have those legs in place, the, the bass drum is nice and secure. The next thing we'll put on is the bass drum beater. Now, this particular bass drum beater, you'll see there's a clamp here, and then this will tighten it down onto the lip or the rim of the bass drum. Now, when putting this on, you don't want to put it all the way in. You don't want to be too far out. You want to get it right on the thickest edge. You want to get it on the thickest edge of this rim so that this will actually clamp down really tight. If you put it all the way in, it'll tighten, but it won't be tightened down on anything. It'll just be solid, but just kind of loose, wiggling around on there. I could show you an example really quick. I'm going to put it all the way down. Now this is firmly tight, but it'll wiggle around a lot. So you want to just kind of pull it out so it's right on the edge of the lip. And tighten it down really secure so that that thing doesn't go anywhere. So we got our bass drum on. Okay, now we're going to start talking about the toms. First of all, for, for this tom mounting system, we just have these bars. This is what you're going to see often. And you'll notice there's two of them. This is a five-piece drum set we're setting up. And when we say five-piece, we're not counting the cymbals or any of the hardware. We're strictly counting the drums. So you see we have one drum. We'll have two toms, a floor tom, and a snare drum, which will equal five. Now, if you look at these arms, you'll see that they look pretty much identical. But you want to be mindful of which one you put on which side. Because one side will have this little crank where you can move the tom back and forth. So first of all, you want to make sure that the cranking part is on the outside of the drum. You don't want to put it in here because then they won't be accessible when both the toms are out. So since this crank is here, we want to put it on the outside, okay? So we'll securely put that in. We don't have to put it in really far yet because we've got to get our toms on it before we drop them. So I'm going to put both of these on. Now you'll see that you'll have different size toms. You want it to go from highest to lowest, okay? So with this first arm here, we're going to start with the high or the smallest tom. So here you see you have the place, the little hole where this would go in. So I'm just going to carefully slide that in there to where I want it, and then I'll screw it down tight, keep that nice and secure. Now once the drum is actually on, that's when I, in fact, will lower it. You see there's a bunch of space here between the rim of the tom and the rim of the bass drum. I'm going to lower it to just to the point of where it's about to touch that rim, and, but make sure it's not touching. Make that nice and secure. Now you're going to see that this tom is slightly on an angle, okay? A lot of drummers like to keep it slightly on an angle. You can adjust the angle with the adjuster that we were talking about before, okay? You don't want it to be too much on an angle and you don't, don't want it to be too flat. Just a little bit on an angle. So that's usually good for me. I'm going to put that right there. Okay, so now we're going to fasten the next tom. Same thing, just goes on the opposite side. Okay, there 
bear with me here. Okay, so now I tighten that tom. And the same thing, I'm going to lower this. That should be good. So that both rims are about parallel to each other, more or less. Okay. Sorry. Bear with me. Next, let's talk about the snare drum. First of all, this is the snare drum stand, okay? First thing we do is, you see it obviously has those tripod legs, like our drum seat or our drum throne. So first, loosen those, and let's just get it standing before anything, okay? And now you're going to see there's these gripper things that kind of come down. What the heck is that all about? Well, you'll see there's a couple places. This one, this twisty thing, would adjust the height of your snare drum, okay? The next one would adjust the tilt, just like these, where this tilts back and forth. Just like the toms, I like to keep it on ever so slightly of a tilt in towards you. That's my preference. Other drummers have different preferences. Now, the other thing you'll see is this little thing that spins back and forth. This will adjust the tension of this gripper that will actually grip the bottom of your snare drum. So the higher it goes, the smaller its grip gets, okay? So we want to make sure that it's nice and wide open that the snare can fit in. Let me grab that snare drum. So here's our snare drum. You'll see with the snare, obviously this is the bottom of the snare where there's the actual stairs themselves. So that will go on the bottom. Now, you'll notice this little lever here. This is actually a control to turn your snare drum into a tom drum. All it does is release these snares, so it's a tom. And then you turn the lever up, and it's your snare drum. I like to put this lever in towards me, so you want to put it in towards the tilt. So now I'm going to carefully put this on. Make sure that each of these rubber little grippers is on the outside of the drum, and one isn't like sticking in there. Oftentimes what I'll do is, once that's on, I will flip the snare over, because it's easier to kind of just tension this down now. So I just kind of rotate this around and get these grippers to be nice and tight on the drum. Now that it's secure, you can see that drum isn't going anywhere, okay? So now, I'm going to place that right there. I like my snare drum just to kind of be just directly under that first tom, okay? One last drum to go, and that's the floor tom. So, this is called the floor tom because the legs themselves, you don't put it on a mounting system, the legs are actually, well some floor toms you do nowadays, but the legs are actually built onto the side. So you can just unscrew the legs and bring it down so to create the sort of tripod. I always get all the legs up there, more or less around the same spot. And then once it's standing, again, I'll take it and I'll drop a leg ever so slightly to give that little tilt in towards you again. So now we put that right there. Okay, so that's our toms. So that's all our drums. Bass drum, snare, and the three toms. It's a five piece. So now we're going to start talking about the cymbals and the hi-hat stand. First, let's talk about the hi-hat stand. Oftentimes, this can be one of the more confusing things to set up on a drum set. A lot of different parts. Okay. Back up just a little bit. Is this okay? So first, you want to drop the pedal itself. Oftentimes the pedal will be let loose when it's all broken down and you're not sure exactly where it goes. So just drop that down. It's okay if it's loose for now. The first thing you want to do is loosen the legs and get that tripod going. More times than not, you'll see that the first thing you do is just get it standing. Then once it's standing on its own, you can more or less kind of figure out the rest. Now that this is standing, you can see that on this pedal there's these little these little rods, and there's these little holes down there where these rods can be placed, placed in. So you just kind of push them in, and then you put those in there. So now this pedal is securely in place. Now that this is standing, you have this part up here, it's called the clutch, and you can loosen it and take it off of this bar, okay? So you got this thing just freestanding. Now the hi-hat requires two symbols, a bottom hi-hat and a top hi-hat. So the first one, oftentimes when you buy hi-hats, It'll clearly say top and bottom. Some of them don't say though, so if it's hard to tell, I would kind of feel them out, and the one that feels heavier would be the bottom hi-hat, okay? So always put the heavier hi-hat on the bottom if it feels like there's a difference and you can't tell which is which. 
If you can't tell, I don't think it really matters that much. So the bottom hi-hat, I'm, I'm just putting on this pole here and setting gently on this felt that you'll see right here, okay? So that just sits there in place. You don't have to hook that up to anything. The top hi-hat's a little more tricky, okay? We've got to hook this to the clutch. So now that I have the clutch in hand, I'm going to unscrew the, top, the clutch. And oftentimes you'll have two little cymbal felts, one here and one there. So once I've taken off that little washer and one felt, I have this little part, okay? So I'm going to put the symbol on upside down like that, okay? And then once that's happening, I put the felt on, and then I will firmly attach the washer so that the top hi-hat is sitting really, is just clutched really secure to the top of this clutch, okay? So now the hi-hat is firmly placed on this thing. Some people like them a little looser. I usually get them nice and tight. Once it's on the clutch and you got that hole there, you can just slide it back onto the hi-hat stand and there you go, okay? Now to get that moving motion, what you do is, you can see if I push this pedal down, this pole here is going to go up and down, okay? So I want it to just go down, I want to push down on it just a little bit and then twist that clutch onto the pole and it should come up, okay? So now I have a fully functioning hi-hat. So now I'm going to place this just right over here. You want to put it somewhere where you can easily access it with your left foot. Okay, now we just have two symbols we have to deal with. We're going to hook up a crash symbol and a ride symbol. Let's start with the crash. So the symbol stands are rel relatively easy. Again, let's just open the tripod so that we get it standing. And this stand, I might actually make my ride symbol. So I'm just going to put this to the side for now. Grab that other stand. Okay. So now I got both of my symbol stands. They're standing, okay? We got the tripods going. Now you'll see there will be different places to adjust the height, okay? It'll usually have two different ones. This one, you know, and then this one would do the same thing to get more height. And then you'll see a common theme here with a lot of drum hardware. There's a part that makes it so you could actually tilt the cymbal once it's on it, okay? And again, ever so slightly tilted in, I usually make my cymbals. So we're going to take this washer off the top. And there'll be little cymbal felts often. Cymbal sleeves, too, are ideal so you don't damage your cymbals. Now, and this crash cymbal actually does have a cymbal sleeve. You can see it's just a little plastic washer sort of thing like this, okay? So I'm going to put that on there, put my crash symbol on. Oftentimes symbols will say whether it's a crash symbol or a ride. This is fast crash. But if you, again, if you can't tell, I would make your smaller symbol be the crash and your largest symbol be the ride. So now I put that on and I can secure it with this washer. So now you can see our symbols in place, okay? I'm going to raise it ever so slightly, this one, and then I'm going to put it right here. Okay, so now we got our symbol. Now let's do our very last thing, our ride symbol. It's the exact same thing. It's just the fact of the matter is it's a bigger symbol. And again, you see there's a sleeve and there's symbol felts in between often. So we put our big ride symbol on. Make sure it's firmly on that sleeve. Secure that. And this will put to the right of the drummer right next to the floor top. Move this. And then once everything's set up, you can just kind of adjust it a little bit here and there to make sure everything is where you want it to be. Okay? That's more or less it. I'm Joe St. Charles at Flats and & Sharp, and this is how to set up a drum set.